What's up, everybody? This is DJ Mocha Java in the studio. Uh, doing a little bit of maintenance today. The uh, Studio 1-4, I needed to upgrade to that. And uh, UAD also got a uh, software uh, update, so I'm getting my UAD stuff uh, updated. But anyway, so while all that's running, I figured this is a good time to go ahead and uh, make a quick video post uh, so this video post I'm doing right now is going to be telling the story of how I got my name Mocha Java. And the reason why I'm telling this story is because I get asked this question a lot. You know, uh, you go by the name of Mocha Java. Why did you go by the name or why did you name yourself after a cup of coffee? You know, because everybody know Mocha Java is a chocolate coffee. So I'm like, okay. Uh, you know, it's a little funny, I said. But uh, the problem is when people ask me that question is it goes too deep to explain the definition of uh, how that my name came about. So uh, it takes a couple of minutes. So I'm going, in this post, I'm going to go ahead and tell the Mocha Java story and try to help some people understand how I got this name of Mocha Java and what the name Mocha Java really meant uh, to me, okay? So the it started out back in the day when I was rapping, uh, and I was uh, J Lyricist or the Lyricist J E P. Uh, I had a couple of different names back then. The rap journalist. I had a couple of different names back then. I was young and I was coming out of high school, and hip hop was uh, in its infancy days and it was flourishing. Uh, but anyways, uh, and I was doing quite a bit of uh, music. I was working with DJs and I was working with bands. And one thing that I noticed when I was young and just starting out is that. Uh, there were a lot of people who were broke as all outdoors, just broke as crap. They didn't have any money, but they was making really good music. And they were performing. They were working musicians, but they was broke. But then I also noticed something else. I saw a bunch of guys who were actually doing pretty all right. They were living pretty decent, you know. And these guys, and I'm talking about, they had, like, you know, nice homes. They had their families. They were taking care of their families, but they had homes. They had studios. Uh, and they was living, and they was eating pretty good. So I was like, okay, I started noticing the difference between those who were making it and eating well and living well and those who weren't. And I noticed that some of the most talented and the most gifted artists were starving and hungry. And some of the ones who wasn't even as talented or as gifted as those guys was living good and eating good. So I'm like, okay, something going on here. I need to figure it out. So me being the uh, analytical person that I am, I needed to find out exactly what was the deal. So I started opening my eyes and having conversations with people as I would go do music. And I noticed that when one day I was uh, performing with a band and the band was playing and uh, at the end of the night, the band, you know, a couple of the band members was pissed off because they had gotten $80 for that show. And it was like, you know, one of the guys was like, I think it was a bass player. So I'm like, I didn't even get a hundred. And, you know, what, what one of the problems was with the bands is, is that, you know, you get so many members in the band, maybe a few people getting, you know, a hundred dollars or eighty dollars or somebody else is getting a hundred and twenty dollars. But this just depends on who's organizing and coordinating and all that. But you know, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep the pace going because this is this gonna take a little bit of time. If you don't have time to watch this whole thing, go on to the next video. But this is the Mocha Java story, so you know you just gotta hang in here with me. But anyway, so these some everybody wasn't getting paid the same, you know. But but it really wasn't about that because the bottom line is it really wasn't much money after playing you know four or five hours that night uh, and having a few dollars. And then me being a rapper, you know, I was getting like maybe twenty five dollars or you know, $50 at the most, because all I did was came on stage, you know, spit a few verses of rap, and I got off, so I was more like just a, you know, a guest uh, appearance inside of, you know, the band show. Uh, but anyway, so to get back on the point, you know, people wasn't making a lot of money, but they was performing daily, you know, or should I say weekly. They would rehearse all weekend, and they go and perform on the weekends. And so I was, I was like, okay, this is not going to be enough money, a couple of hundred dollars, you know, at the end of the week, you know, maybe you made three hundred dollars at the f total that weekend. You that you're not going to live large off of that. So, what I found out was is that some of these guys that were actually living good had other jobs. They were working and they had jobs with life insurance, health insurance, uh, you know, benefits, you know, retirement benefits. And I was like, man, that's the kind of job I need. 
So, you know, I was talking to some of the musicians who had decent jobs in addition to the fact that they were playing. And I was like, you know, how y'all, how, what kind of jobs y'all working and how y'all getting all of these jobs, with these good jobs with benefits? He said, well, a good job with benefits, you know, you're going to have to have some kind of a skill. And he says, and what we do is IT. And I said, IT? And they said, yeah, like network administration, system administration, we pull cables, we uh, we wire network closets, we, we, we getting it in. So I'm like, wow. I said, that's good. I said, can I get that? And they said, well, you got to understand a little bit about, you know, wiring and, and, and signals. And I was like, well, I don't know nothing about that. I said, how'd you learn that? And they're like, well, I'm in the band. In the band, we have to hook up all of our music equipment, you know. When you're in a band, you got, you have like, uh, you know, things like what they call a jack. That's one of these things right here. And you plug this into your guitar. You might plug this into, you know, uh, an amplifier or plug it into different things. But the bottom line is you have these different devices in music when you're in a band and mixer boards or whatever, and you're plugging things in. So you had to understand something called signal flow when you are in a band and you need to make sure that your music is sounding good. So they, you, you're actually working with, uh, you know, electrical technology. Uh, so they were using technology for bands for the music. And so when they went to a company or corporation, those same concepts of signal flow, they were able to use to get into the IT arena and become system administrators, network administrators, to become the guys that pull cables through buildings and set up patch bays and network closets. And they were making good cheese, getting benefits and all sorts of stuff. And some of them went and took classes and, you know, uh, in addition to whatever music classes they were taking and really was making good livings. And next thing you know, they're buying homes, they're buying cars, they you know, they buy nice clothes, they're eating good, their family's living good, you know, they're having really decent lives. So it was a real drastic change between the ones who were living good and the ones who was, like, sleeping on everybody's couches or, you know, um, some guys just went from one chick house to another chick house or, you know, some chick, she's uh, with, with, a, with a guy who, you know, has money, but then she's taking a whole lot of stuff because even though she does music, she's not making a lot of money doing music, so she's listening or dealing with some situations that she don't really want to deal with. And now all of that's another thing. I'm not even getting into all of that, but what I'm trying to say is when you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of options, and when you don't have a lot of options, you end up dealing with or taking a lot of, uh, you know, things that you you probably would not want to do. So, you know, you might not be living the way you want to live. Let me just say it that way. So my point is, is that, you know, it didn't matter whether you was male or female. When you were broke and you were a musician and you were a struggling artist, you were struggling. But then if you were a musician who was living well and doing well, it might meant that you were doing something in addition to your art or your craft. So that's the beginning of it. And that's where the first light bulb hit for me. So again, this is the Mocha Java story. I'm trying to tell how I got the name Mocha Java, and I'm working my way up to this. So anyway, my buddies who were in the bands, they had was getting these IT jobs or jobs in the computer field where they were where they were wiring data centers and network closets and whatever, and they were using the concepts that they learned from connecting musical equipment and signal flow inside of that arena where they were getting real pay, better pay than they were actually making as a musician, but they would continue to play their music uh, on the weekends for the enjoyment and the love of the art, but then they would go during the week and they would really get some real uh, pay and take care of their families. So it would be those groups and there was the struggling groups who were always mooching off of everybody, uh, always trying to find the next way to make a dollar, and they were putting everything, all of their time, energy, heart, and soul into music feeling that one day they're going to get that big hit. And, uh, and then they will be able to pay everybody back that they owe. So those were the two paths I've seen people on. So now when it came to rapping, and I was spitting, I, was, I wasn't I was a singer, I was a rapper at the time. And so rappers, you know, I, we, we weren't even making a lot of money. And there was a lot of guys that were that were doing rap, you know, believe it or not. Lots of guys were doing rapping, was really had that dream. Uh, but one of the things is that some of the guys who were rapping, who were actually known, that were making music and that were getting paid, they still wasn't making a lot. So even though they had notoriety and celebrity, I noticed they were struggling. I'm like, hold on now. You mean to tell me I can go through all of this, I can get hit, uh, and then I can be still struggling? I mean, it was only a few that were really at the top of the game that were eating well. Everybody else was just out performing and struggling. So I'm like, okay, you know, it doesn't matter how much this talent I have. You know, I don't want to be struggling and starving. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do. So anyway, let's just wrap, get, get, speed this thing up a little bit. So 
I was talking to my buddy who was a network uh, engineer, and he was a drummer. And, and, and I asked him, I said, well, you know, you, you think you can get me a job in there where you guys are working? He said, you don't know anything about signal flow. Uh, and so I said, well, shucks, if they're taking what they know and their knowledge from music and transferring it into the IT field, what do I do? And I said, well, you know, I'm a, uh, a rapper, you know, so I'm the lyrics, lyrics guy. I write songs. I'm a writer. I'm the writer's part. I said, do they, do they have any jobs for people that write inside of the IT? They said, well, those guys mostly that write, they write computer programs or scripts. So if you can write some computer scripts, you'll be all right. But that's hard. And I'm like, well, you know, I could probably do that. So then I went and was talking to one of the recruiters, and I was like, hey, I'm trying to get a job. You know, uh, can I get a job as one of your writers or script writers or, uh, you know, or, or programmers? And it's like, and then I thought, that's when that, bu- that word hit me, programmer. Pro and grammar. I'm a rapper. I am a pro with the grammar. That's exactly what I do. So if I'm a pro with the grammar, I should be able to be a programmer. So I said, I'm going to go and get me a job as a programmer. Those guys are doing what they do, which is signal flow. I'm going to be a programmer. So I went and told those guys, look, I'm a programmer. I'm a pro with the grammar. If you, if, if you got to type it, if it's words, I can do it. So anyway, let's just wrap it up. So they were like, well, well, it's not that simple. It says, first of all, most people don't even want to program or get into programming because programming requires you to sit down and you got to have a certain temperament with it. And I'm like, what do you mean temperament? Well, you have to write, you know, you have to think logically and you have to solve problems and you have to be able to write something and it's got to work on the computer. And when you write something, like if you write a paper for anybody else, they just read it and fine. But if you write in a program, if the computer don't like what you write, it's going to say error, error. No, nah, that's not working. Syntax error. And I said, well, you know what? I have to deal with that with music. Sometimes if I'm writing something or if I'm trying to make something rhyme or if I'm trying to make a phrase or a line work with the music, it might not work. And then I have to rewrite it and I have to rewrite it. So I realized, hold up, I got the temperament for that because I do that anyway. In fact, most rappers had a temperament for that. Most rappers have to write things and keep doing something, uh, the same line over and over again until they get that line right. That's all what the programmers were doing. They were just writing those lines until they can get it right, until they get the computer to do what they want to do. So I said, okay, I'm going to go into programming. So I went and took me some programming classes so that I can learn how to be a programmer. And to tell you the truth, I failed the first time. Then I went and took the class again, failed the second time, took the class again, and finally passed it the third time. I was determined that I was going to be a programmer because I'm like, ain't no way anywhere you're going to tell me I'm not a pro with the grammar. So anyway, uh, let's, let's get this thing going. And I think for some people, the light is probably clicking now how I got the name Mocha Java. But for those who it hasn't clicked yet for, I'm going to continue on with the story, with the Mocha Java story. So... After doing all of that, uh, you know, taking those classes and passing, then I started taking a few additional classes, and then it got a little bit easier because I had taken a few classes and I passed some classes, and then I was able to get hired because I could show the, the uh, recruiters what I had learned in school. You know, I took my disc out and put them on and said, here, this is, these are the programs that I wrote and these are the things that I was able to do. And they were like, oh, yeah, we can use you now. So then they were able to hire me. Uh, so that was the case. But then when I first went to my first job interview, and they sent me on an interview, I noticed I was the only young black man in there taking the interview. It was all 50-year-old white guys, and I was probably maybe 24, 25 years old at the time. And I'm like, whoa, I'm uh, this young black guy in here with this room with all of these 50-year-old white men? And, And it was like they didn't even believe that I belonged in the room. But I was like, you know, whatever. And... I got hired. In fact, I got hired and some of them didn't. I mean, you know, so maybe if it was a room full of like 25 guys applying for the job, five of us got hired and I got selected, you know. So I was really, you know, excited because I finally got a job programming. I had taken some classes. I learned how to do it. And at that time, I was programming Microsoft. So Microsoft had basic and visual basic, and I was doing that. Uh, and I was still doing my music. So I was rapping. I was rolling with the DJs. We was doing music. I remember being in a band called Elements, but I was doing my basic programming. And then, you know, I was able to afford my apartment, pay my bills. I was able to, you know, get my first car. And, uh, I mean, and I was really, really moving. I mean, to correct that. I mean, I did get a car when I was rapping before I started programming, but it was an old, you know, like, you know, used secondhand car, old duster. But I'm talking about when I started programming, 
No, I got me a brand new car off the lot, you know, fresh off the lot. That was my first brand new spanking car. It wasn't no more hoopty type of thing. Uh, now, let me just do a side note right here because when I decided to do that, I wanted to do things the right way. Now, there were some rappers, and, you know, we got to keep it 100 here, who were flossing. They had some nice gear and nice clothes, and they were spitting, and they was going to studios, and they were looking good, but they didn't have regular jobs. They were kind of doing some of the stuff that was kind of illegal or wrong, uh, and those were the ways they were, were compensating for the fact that the music wasn't paying. All I'm going to say to you right now is I was not willing to go down that road. For one, I did not want to be locked up. And number two, I didn't want to be dead, okay? And I knew where that led to. So I made the decision for myself that I wasn't going to go down that illegal path. So we're going to get back on the story. Now, I'm not knocking anyone who felt the need to do that or to take those chances. That's, you know, something that every man have to make a decision for for themselves and live with the consequences of their decision. But for me, those were not consequences or outcomes that I was willing to risk. So I did not do that. So I went to whatever I feel like I could do that would be legal, that would could keep me safe, and then if I had a family, I could keep my family safe. So again, not knocking nobody what nobody else does, but this was just the path that I took. So I went into the programming right route because I felt like I was a pro with the grammar and that I could do that. So anyway, this new programming language came out uh, while I was doing basic, and it was called Java. And there was a lot of guys making money doing this job. And I'm like, Java, what's that? And they was like, they call it Java, man. And I was like, you know, it's, they say it's like it's kind of like C++, but uh, but you can, it can work on any environment. They was talking about the strengths and weaknesses. Of it. I'm like, but why they call it Java? Isn't Java coffee? And that's where the whole coffee thing comes in. They was like, yes, but because programmers tend to drink a lot of coffee and sit up late at night, that's why they called the language Java. This was the story, at least the way I got the story, um, because programmers drink a lot of coffee, you know, so that they can stay awake and program. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. That makes sense. A lot of programmers drink a lot of coffee, or basically it was caffeine. So you drink a lot of coffee or you, or you drink a lot of soda so that you can stay up and program. That's pretty much what it was because people put long programming hours in. Uh, anyway, so that all being the case, so they called, they came up with this language called Java. And so I, I had a job that asked me to, uh, you know, even though you do, you know, Visual uh, Studio, Visual Basic, uh, and .NET, I, uh, C Sharp was out at the time, uh, do you have a problem doing Java or learning Java? I was like, look, man, I ain't got no problem with doing whatever y'all paying me for. If y'all want to pay me to do Java, I'm going to do Java. So I started programming Java. And then when I started programming Java, I noticed it was a lot more nationalities doing Java than what I saw doing the, the, the Microsoft type programming. And what I mean is, uh, I was around Asian guys, I was around Ethiopian guys, I was around white guys, uh, but there were very few brothers, black men, in there doing Java. I was probably maybe one of three black men out of maybe 400 Java programmers I knew. I mean, it was crazy. We were just so underrepresented in that programming arena, and yet thousands of us were pros with the grammar when it came to spitting raps and music, you know, or lyrics. We could we could flow that grammar in such a creative way and get people excited, but yet we could take that same creativity and make way more money than what most of us was making, you know, on stage in a few hours programming Java, doing the same thing, sitting down and flipping grammar. So anyway, I was like, okay, so these guys, uh, I see all these other nationalities represented and very few brothers represented. And then I remember one day I was sitting down and they were getting coffee for the, all of the Java programmers and one of these guys came and bought me a coffee and I was like, oh, what's, I dropped, I drank the coffee and I was like, hold up. I asked y'all for a coffee. This is hot chocolate. They were like, no, 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 that's not a hot chocolate. We gave you mocha java because you're the only brother in here, and we figured you might want the chocolate coffee. So they were, they were playing a little uh, joke with me, but then that mocha java coffee was actually pretty good. That was the first mocha java I had, and it came from my computer programming buddies. So anyway, so I was drinking the java uh, 
you know, the, the mocha java. And I was like, I like that. And then they, the next thing you know, I just start asking for him every time. Well, yeah, bring me back a mocha java. And next thing you know, the name mocha java starts sticking to me, not in the music industry, but in the computer programming industry, because I was the java programmer who was the brother or the chocolate programmer that some people like to say. So that's how I got the name Mocha Java because I was a one of the rare, you know, it was something that separated me being a Java programmer but being a brother uh, and most uh, other nationalities weren't, you know, weren't black. They weren't, they, they, they weren't of the chocolatey complexion. So anyway, that name stuck. So then when I remember, I, you know, I was in the, uh, I was rapping uh, and I always did music. I never stopped doing music. I've always done music, even though I was making money doing Java. And Java bought my house, and Java was buying my cars, and Java was helping me put my kids through school. You know, to, uh, you know, uh, paying for my children to be able to grow up and to develop into who they were. Java was giving me the bulk of that money. You know, uh, I would. I mean, maybe I would make. You know, go and perform when I was in the band Elements. Uh, maybe I would make. Two hundred dollars, the most, on the Elements Band on the front line, just sort of rapping um, and talking to the beat, what we call go go, talking to the beat. But uh, that was E Two K Elements Two Thousand Band. We were a small little band. We 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 only known in the D.C. area for those people who who listen to us. Uh, but anyway, let me just get back to it. So uh, I wasn't making much money doing that. You know, but the but the computer programming, I was making all of that money doing that, and I was really living, and I was living large. So, finally, when I started DJing, uh, I thought, you know, well, what's, what am I going to make my DJ name be? So, I would use the name Mocha Java from, you know, the computer world. I'm going to use the name Mocha Java for my DJing. And so, that's how I ended up becoming DJ Mocha Java. So, that's really the true story. Uh, and, you know, I hope that clicks for somebody because... This uh, Java pays, and it paid me well, you know. Uh, and 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 people need to realize and represent, and I feel good representing Mocha Java because there are a lot more people than the Indians and the Ethiopians and the Asians uh, and the, uh, the, you know, the whites uh, that are doing, uh, you know, there are brothers that are programming, and it's a lot more now than when I first started, but there are some Mocha Java programmers out there you know, or some mocha uh, guys doing system work uh, that are pros with the grammar. So anyway, that's it. Um, that's the story of how I got the name Mocha Java. I know it's crazy. It has nothing to do with the studio production work that I'm doing. It has nothing to do with the DJing that I'm doing. It really doesn't have nothing to do with a whole lot of that. I brought that name from that world because that was the name that I got paid under the bulk of my money. Anyway, I hope y'all like this video. I hope y'all understand that story. I hope y'all like the story. Uh, keep the questions coming. Uh, I'll try to answer as much as I can. Uh, but until the next time, DJ Mocha Java, peace, I'm out.